Cisco Electric here. Today is Sunday, October 13th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. General Motors held its Investor Day event this week, which revealed details about upcoming changes to their EVs and battery technology. President Mark Royce said they have improved Lyric production from the 2024 model to 2025 model year by reducing the parts count by 24%. That is the kind of agility we expect from pure play EV brands, but it's encouraging to see a legacy original equipment manufacturer making significant vehicle changes within the first two years of production. Next on stage was Tesla's former senior director of battery technology, Kurt Kelty, who is now GM's vice president of batteries. He's been at the company for just nine months and seems to be making swift sweeping improvements as evidenced by the new EV battery strategy he unveiled. The battery roadmap will now focus on four pillars, safety, manufacturing cost, production expansion, and improving energy density. He said GM will sunset the Ultium brand name originally announced in 2020. It was designed to be a one-size-fits-all modular approach which would scale up their EV model line. The name will be relegated to GM manufacturing facilities which operate in partnership with LG Energy Solutions. Next, he revealed that they will explore different battery formats, including prismatic and cylindrical cells, alongside the current pouch cells. They intend to tailor solutions to individual vehicle models. They expect their next generation prismatic cells to reduce production complexity and lower cost. Their goal is to reduce their EV battery pack costs by $60 per kilowatt hour within the next 10 weeks. Kelty said when they introduce their Gen 2 lithium iron phosphate packs, they expect to reduce the cell production costs by up to $6,000 per truck while offering 350 miles of range. He mentioned they are currently searching for a cell partner for LFP. They also announced plans for a new $145 million battery cell prototype research and development facility at its Warren Tech Center in Michigan. It will be geared towards improving battery technology scale and is slated to be operational by 2027. Do you think GM is on the right track to offer EVs which can compete with Tesla and Hyundai Group in the USA? Nissan has recently announced its entry into the Chargescape Alliance alongside BMW, Ford, and Honda. Their investment positions Nissan with a 25% ownership stake in the Coalition for Electric Vehicle Grid Integration. Chargescape includes a software platform which wirelessly connects to EVs and manages the flow of electrons in line with real-time grid conditions. The smart charging technology adjusts charging based on grid demand. EV drivers who choose to opt in can receive financial incentives for temporarily pausing charging during periods of high demand and will eventually be able to sell the energy stored in their vehicle's battery pack to the utility company. In return, the utility company can reduce their reliance upon expensive and often high-emission peaker plants. Chargescape claims additional automakers are set to join in the coming months. Do you think this program is a win for EV owners, automakers, and utility companies? LG Energy Solutions and Mercedes-Benz have made a deal for North American battery production. LGES will supply 50.5 gigawatt hours of EV batteries over a period of 10 years starting from 2028, in addition to joint research and development. As a refresher, LG Energy Solutions already has U.S. manufacturing facilities in partnership with Hyundai, GM, and Honda, which are either in development or operation. The company has independent facilities in Michigan and Arizona. The Michigan facility currently supplies Toyota, but their Arizona plant isn't yet affiliated with an automaker. It's located in Queen Creek and is expected to be completed by late 2025. There, they plan to produce 46 series cylindrical cells with 36 gigawatt hours of annual capacity. Could this be the site which partners with Mercedes, or do you think they'll build a new facility together? Tesla hosted its much-anticipated We Robot event at the Warner Brothers studio lot in Burbank, California. The long-awaited event was late to start and was delayed by 53 minutes due to a medical emergency in the crowd. Head of design Franz von Holzhausen welcomed viewers and introduced the live broadcast. Next, CEO Elon Musk arrived in a two-seater, fully autonomous robo-taxi called the CyberCab. 
Like all other Teslas, the Cybercab operates using cameras and artificial intelligence. Unlike existing systems from Waymo, Cruise, Zooks, and the upcoming robo-taxi from Remotz-backed Vern, there are no radar or LiDAR sensors feeding data to the compute platform. Walter Isaacson's biography of Elon Musk, which was published in September of 2023, featured this drawing of the Cybercab. Eight months later, on June 26th of 2024, Remotz unveiled Vern, and we reported on that at the time. Do you think the similarity of these designs is a result of coincidence? Back to the details, the Tesla Cybercab will not be produced with pedals or a steering wheel. It includes a 21-inch center screen inside, which provides information about the route with visualizations of objects and pedestrians in its view, along with movies, games, and other content to entertain riders on their trip. The vehicle will not include a charging port because it exclusively accepts wireless charging. It is the first official announcement of wireless charging by Tesla since acquiring German wireless charging startup Wifirion last summer. As we've previously reported, Tesla retained the engineering side of the business but sold Wifirion's manufacturing and operations. Elon said the Cybercab will be available for the public to buy with a price point under $30,000. He identified an operational cost target of 20 cents per mile, which is lower than a typical city bus. As with all unsupervised Teslas, Elon reiterated the safety target for Tesla's unsupervised self-driving of 10 to 30 times safer than a human driver. Tesla offered no specific details about battery capacity or chemistry, range, or charging time. Press images and videos released after the event show an autonomous cleaning system, which could indicate a fleet management technology suite, which does not require human labor. The surprise of the night came in the form of a larger autonomous shuttle van designed to transport up to 20 passengers or goods for cargo. The Tesla RoboVan's specifications and timelines were not communicated during the event. Tesla's robo-taxis require functional breakthroughs of their full self-driving technology. Currently, the system is classified as level two in accordance with the Society of Automotive Engineers definitions for the five levels of driving autonomy. The Cybercab is expected to operate with level five autonomy. Currently, Mercedes is the only automaker with US clearance for operation above level two with their extremely limited level three system on select EQS and S-Class models. Those vehicles are restricted to operation below 40 miles per hour on certain freeways in California and Nevada. Google's Waymo driverless taxis currently operate with level four autonomy in several geofenced cities throughout the USA. By comparison, Tesla's FSD is being designed to operate on any roadway, even if unmapped. The software is in development and has been deployed on millions of Model S, X, 3, Y, and Cybertruck EVs. Tesla's fleet collects 1 million miles of driving data every seven minutes and sends learning moments to one of the world's most powerful artificial intelligence hardware clusters. The company's neural network has been informed by over 1 billion miles of data so far. If Tesla's vehicles can learn to drive safely and legally, the transportation industry and civilization in its entirety will change significantly. Skepticism is understandable. Elon Musk first mentioned the possibility of FSD back in 2013. In 2015, during an interview with Fortune magazine, he said it would be a reality in two years. In 2016, he said all Tesla vehicles would be shipped with the hardware for level five autonomy. In 2017, during a TED talk, Elon Musk said, November or December of this year, we should be able to go from a parking lot in California to a parking lot in New York, no controls touched at any point during the entire journey. In 2018, he said it would happen in 2019. In 2019, he said it would happen in 2020. In 2020, he told the BBC, I remain confident that we will have the basic functionality for level five autonomy complete this year. There are no fundamental challenges remaining. In a 2021 earnings call, he said, I'm highly confident the car will drive itself for the reliability in excess of a human this year. This is a very big deal. In a 2022 earnings call, he said, 
and I think we are completely confident at this point that it will be achieved. And my personal guess is that we'll achieve full self-driving this year. Yes, with data safety levels significantly greater than present. In 2023, he said there will be a little bit of two steps forward, one step back between releases for those trying the beta. But the trend is very clearly towards full self-driving, towards full autonomy. And I hesitate to say this, but I think we'll do it this year. This is just regarding FSD, but I think you get the point. At the We Robot event, Elon said the cyber cab would go into production sometime before 2027. He said that unsupervised FSD would launch next year in California and Texas, first in the Model 3 and Model Y. He clarified unsupervised means you would be able to sleep while the vehicle was driving and wake up arriving at your destination. Elon Musk has subsequently responded to posts on X regarding his accuracy for time-based predictions and says he generally aims for the 50th percentile date, which means half of his predictions will be late and half will be early. He also said it is very rare that a prediction he makes does not become true over time. Elon has said before that those who do not believe Tesla will solve FSD should not invest in Tesla. After the event, investors reacted by selling. The stock price dropped 11%, which equates to nearly $70 billion of valuation. In the run-up before the event, investors might have priced in a more historic launch with more specific details. What are your thoughts on Tesla's ability to make full self-driving a reality with their cyber cab and robovan? This past week, we visited the North American Battery Show once again to cover industry trends and interesting innovations. The event keeps getting bigger, but we managed to uncover some gems. We've published a dedicated video at youtube.com slash at industry, and I'll be sure to place a link in this video's description. Be sure to subscribe to our industry channel while you're over there. Well, that wraps up today's episode. If you found value in the current, I hope you'll consider sharing a link to this episode online. And please feel free to join me on other social media platforms, including X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up to the minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you for watching and until next week, drive, fly, ride, go electric. <laughs>